With a zipper. That's charming, right? Well, it can be. Really? Yeah. Oh. So what? Flatulence. Also charming, right? Ugh. Matt, I think your perception of your listening audience is skewed towards the people who actually call. So you're telling me that the people who don't even have the strength or the wherewithal to dial the phone are the actual core audience? I think somebody who calls in to talk to a radio personality is somebody who is very needy and somebody who wants to be the show. They don't want to hear the show. Why are you fixated on who calls radio stations? I come here in personal pain. I mean, are you fascinated with my profession, doctor? Not fascinated. It's an interesting choice you've made. It's a lonely life, you know. You sit in a little room and you talk to no one. You're talking about now? There are parallels, I have Yes, yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, where you been? I was at the garden. I figured. Were you in somebody else's garden? <clears throat> well, some some of the people there, you know, it's actually a really nice group of people, and, and some of them are showing me a couple of gardening tricks. Really? Yep. And uh, were, were a whole bunch of people showing you, or just one person in particular? Well, no, no one in particular. You know, the, it's a community of gardeners. Right. Yeah. Was Greta there? Yeah, she was there. Really? How do you know Greta? <laughs> 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 well, let's just say I was at the gardens today too, Dad. And I met Greta. Why were you snooping around the garden? I wasn't snooping. And what did she say about me? What do you mean? Why Greta. are you so interested? Well, because, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. Dad. No, you said you, you said you met Greta. Dad, the jig is up. I know what's going on. I know you like Greta. She's a perfectly nice person. Why shouldn't I like her? Dad, I guess I'm just proud of the old man, you know? You're going out of your way to, uh, to meet a woman. It's very chivalrous. I'm not going out of my way. I, I, I am gardening, and among my friends at the gardens is a woman named Greta who I find very good company. That's all. Mm. These people are very genuine, very warm. and uh, So how did it go with, uh, with Greta today, did you? Pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be an easier way to meet women. I think I'm onto something with this gardening. I mean, it's not, not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it to meet women, but... I mean, it just seems so silly. It makes everything look so silly, like you're actually going to go garden just to meet that woman, Greta. Yeah. It's funny. Well, have you ever seen a square dance? That's crazy, too. You're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> People in the parade are cocky, you know? They think that they... Uh that they have attracted an audience, but really it's just people waiting to cross the street. Right. I could attract a crowd too if I stood in everybody's way. Hmm. I got into an argument with a girlfriend inside of a tent. That's a bad place for an argument because then I tried to walk out and slam the flat. That's tough. How are you supposed to express your anger in this situation? Zipper it up really quick. I was standing by a door and... Uh, Security guard came over and he said, you're going to have to move. You're blocking the fire exit. As though if there was a fire, I wasn't going to run. If you're flammable and have legs, you are never blocking a fire exit. Right. I like an escalator, man, because an escalator can never break down. It can only become stairs. Right. There would be no sign that says escalator temporarily out of order, just a sign that says escalator temporarily stairs. I was working at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, and there was four comedians on the bill, and we all had similar hair because we were all using the Riviera in-house shampoo. Right. It's two-in-one shampoo, and two-in-one is a bad term because one is not big enough to hold two. That's why two was created. If it was two-in-one, it would be overflowing. I think foosball is a combination of soccer and shish kebabs. Hmm. Foosball ruined my perception of soccer. I thought you had to kick the ball and then spin round and round. I can't do a backflip, much less several, simultaneously with two other guys that look just like me. There's something about planting seeds and coming back every day and seeing how they're doing, mm. nurturing. Mm -hmm. It's the getting out of the house, the sunshine, mm -hmm. the sense of community. Come on, come on, cats. Cats, what's the catch here? 
What do you mean, catch? Why are you so suspicious all the time? You know, maybe Jonathan is just looking for a nice hobby. Thank you, Julie. Gardening is definitely something that can relieve stress, rejuvenate the soul. Right, Jonathan? No, no, I mean, sort of. I, I mean, I'm doing it for relieving stress. See? But I also enjoy watching this particular woman digging up the dirt. Jonathan. In fact, I think that's the part that rejuvenates my soul. I know it. I know it. You're doing it for a woman. All right, so it's not about growing anything. You're just trying to get close to this woman. Well. And does and she has a gardening plot there. Yeah, she has a plot. And, um, you know, she's been showing me a couple of tricks. <laughs> you know, Hadley, if you... <laughs> He takes the seeds. She goes like this. Baby wants a new pair of shoes. Then she puts them in the ground. <laughs> she said a lot of it's just luck. I can't even believe that you got one so soon. Yeah, Ben, I, I feel like I just won the lottery. They called this afternoon, and my, my number came up. Well, I thought it, you said there was going to be six months to a year. Not... Well, you know, I guess I guess uh, something happens to open up a plot, you know? Somebody leaves or dies, and then one opens up. It's like any, it's like an apartment. I guess. I guess. Or, or people, other people drop off the list. You know, they just don't have the patience that I have. So where is... Um... It's plot number 16, isn't it? 16. Is, what, is that what it says? It's right over here. Wait a second. This is your plot? No, that, that can't be the plot, because that's, uh, that's Greta's plot. That's right, I remember. It's got to be some kind of mistake, Ben, because this is... Uh, this is 16. So Greta's apparently gone. Yeah. She must have uh, left and moved out. Well, she, she wouldn't have just moved out without um, saying goodbye. Are you hurt by it? Of course I'm hurt, Ben. I'm devastated. Well, Dad, you know what? You, you could have... It might as well have happened this way. I think it was easier on you. Number one, you don't have to garden now. True. And, um, too, you know, you save yourself from getting hurt later. We can't go through life afraid of being hurt because that way you, you won't know love. You know, these, uh, these relationships have a cumulative value. A little bit of love here, caring here. It adds up to nothing <laughs> at the end of the day. Well, these you're are, home alone. These are tough times for you. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do without all the walking and the gardening. I was thinking about getting a, um, a cactus. What do you think about that idea? Well, we certainly have the fertilizer. <laughs> Are you familiar with the with the Rorschach test? I've never taken one. I know I'm familiar with the test. Well, the idea is I'm just going to show you an image, and you tell me whatever pops into your head, and there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you this, and tell me what it, what's the first thing that pops into your head. The Harvard-Yale game. Huh. Now this one. Harvard Princeton. Um, what does this remind you of? Well, it's a, it's a cave, some kind of a cave, a bad cave. That's right. Are you an only child? No, although I don't really have much contact with my brothers and sisters. But as a child, were you competing with them for the attention of your parents? Well, I like to feel as though we all lost. How many of you were there? Three. A brother and a sister. Right. Isn't it always like that? Mm. Did you have a lot of friends when you were a kid? Yeah. Interestingly, I'm friendly with a lot of my childhood friends. You still, you still maintain relationships with them? Well, that's the good news. Yeah. The bad news, I don't seem to have made a new friend since I was seven or eight years old. See, I, I don't know why that's bad news. It just says that you are a guy who is loyal. Right. Who likes to take things as far as they can go. Mm-hmm. And who can't make new friends. <laughs> I can't wait till this session is over because I have a roll of lifesavers in my pocket and pineapple is next. That's great, Mitch. This shirt is dry clean only, mm -hmm. which means it's dirty. Hmm. I wrote a script and I gave it to a guy who reads scripts and he read it and he said he really likes it, but he thinks I need to rewrite it. I said, forget that. I'll just make a copy. I'll go to Kinko's because Kinko's is my favorite copy center if I had to pick one. Mm -hmm. Because they're open 24 hours. Right. That's great. Like if it's 5 a.m. and then I decide I need two of something. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Kinko's. No problem. See, I'm a dreamer, man. And when I was a cook, I'd always work with people who weren't dreamers. Mm -hmm. Like, I was cooking at this restaurant, and I put a hot dog on the grill, and my kitchen manager came over. He said, Mitch, 
put the hot dog up here in the right hand corner of the grill. So in case you get a whole bunch of orders at once, you have all this space available. Right. See, that's how I knew he wasn't a dreamer, because the day I give up my dreams is the day I have strategic grill location. Hmm. A dreamer has a philosophy. The entire grill is hot. Whoops. You know what the music means, but we're going we're gonna to have to stop. Our time is up. Well, okay, that's cool. I, I got that lifesaver waiting for me, man. You know, you want one? You, want, you can have the one after the pineapple, which would probably be cherry, which is everybody's favorite. Well, I, I don't know if it's everybody's favorite. Ah, oh, see, man, you, you look at things too deeply. Come on, cherry's good. 